What's going on everybody? It's your favorite sh internet roommate. And it's pretty often I hear from gamers and such about how much of a masterpiece Shadow of the Colossus is and how many games strive to be like it. But I feel I never hear too much talk about the PS2 predecessor of Colossus, Eco. A for sure cult classic, but never brought up enough for its influence on modern games. Because Eco has both influenced indie games and giants that would themselves then go on to influence the industry. But before we go ahead and spread the sweet, slippery, sweaty cheeks of the influence of Eco, let's do a breakdown of what exactly Eco is and what makes it great. Eco, or as it's factually known as Horn Boy Escort Adventures, is an action adventure game for the PS2 and 3 by Team Eco. Shout out to Wikipedia. The game begins with you playing as Eco, getting banished to this castle by these dudes. Because you were born with horns and in the village you're from, that's a bad omen. But it is at this castle that you were banished to where you meet your anime waifu, Yorda who is the daughter of the queen of this castle who's trying to use Yorda to extend her own lifespan. And thus the main gameplay is you, aka Eco, aka Horde Boy, holding your anime waifu Yorda's hand and helping her escape the castle, while assisting Yorda with platforming obstacles, puzzles and keeping her safe from these shadow creatures. And while Eco's gameplay can be described with a paragraph and its combat literally be boiled down to uh, hit the bad guy? with your stick. That isn't what makes Eco great. It's more about how Eco uses these simple mechanics to tell its story and how it connects its gameplay to the connection of the characters. Eco uses gameplay to portray emotional storytelling, telling a story in a way that only games can. But you can't talk about Eco without talking about its passionate director. Who got inspired to make Eco after seeing a Japanese commercial of a woman holding a young boy's hand. Four months afterwards, he presented a concept trailer for Eco to Sony, which he created all by himself. Before Ueda became a gamer, he studied as an artist. In fact, he was the one who painted this beautiful cover art of the game, which perfectly encapsulates the vibe of Eco. So, of course, here in the West, um, Let's just say they didn't use that one. But I do believe Oeda's background in art is what makes Eco's style and aesthetic still hold up today. I feel like after we left that era of gaming where every game was trying to be like dark and serious and realistic and, and specifically the color brown, <laughs> that people look back at these dark games and think they can't be beautiful, that you need vibrant colors to look interesting. But I think Eco clearly shows why that's not the case. Eco is very much a dark game full of desaturated colors, but it's still beautiful. That gorgeous bloom look and surreal character design is all part of that unique minimalist Eco aesthetic. The foreboding architecture of the castle itself. It's such a grand structure, but it's empty so it feels lonely and desolate. And the way the architecture is designed, it tells a story, a, a history. And when you're inside the castle exploring it, and it has this fixed locky 2 ass camera that lets you look around but just barely enough to where the only thing you can see is how much higher the ceilings are than you are, and the scale just makes you feel minuscule and tiny. Which only adds to the oppressive atmosphere of the castle, but it only makes you want to explore it more. Eco's atmosphere is wholly unique. There's not too much like it that gives me the same feeling of it. Its main aesthetic is influenced by artists like Giorgio De Chirico, which if you look at his paintings and compare it even to the cover of Eco, the influence is pretty obvious. But it's also inspired by the architect who then later turned into a painter, Gérard Trignac. His illustrations give that exact same feeling of scale and isolation that this castle does. It gives me a similar vibe to Miyazaki's Castle in the Sky. There's just something about like forgotten, overgrown with vines, like abandoned castles, especially if they're like floating in the sky. That is, that is just my sh**, man. That's my aesthetic right there. And watching that movie as a kid filled me with all this wonderlust of wanting to explore a, a castle like that. And Eco and really all of Wada's games, they give you that ability to explore every nook and cranny of those types of areas. You can traverse these infinite bridges and reach the deepest depths of the castle and hang on the actual windmills. It gives you the ability to explore locations that feel like they should only exist in paintings. And the coolest part is this castle is one entire interconnected level. So at points you'll be able to see areas you've already been 
and areas you will eventually go to, which makes the castle feel that much more real. But outside of the aesthetic, I think one of the most important things that Eco has done for modern gaming is Eco's main design philosophy that was coined by Ueda, design by subtraction, which is basically removing any element that interferes with a game's story or its world, pretty much only keeping the elements that make the game special. Originally, Eco both had more complex enemies and a more complex combat system, and even more areas than just this castle. But he removed all that because he felt it took away from the main point of the game, which is this. And while I do think he went a little too far with it, I still think this idea is valuable. Especially in a time like now where every game is like, okay, so what did the last big open world game have that our game didn't have? Climbing? Okay, throw it in. To the point where a lot of those games are kind of losing their identity. It doesn't even feel like you're playing a different game, just the same game with a different skin. Hello gamers, I hope you're ready for our new exclusive coming to the Soldier console, Horizon Ghosts of Assassin's Creed Redemption The Wild Hunt. But here, it's just eco and there's nothing like it. But what this philosophy also does is make sure that every part of the gameplay is connected to the story, which gives more immersion for the player. Otherwise known as that phrase that gives obsessive dorks like myself that big chub in our pants, gameplay and story integration, baby. Allowing Eco to tell a story in ways only a game can. That's why it doesn't really need a lot of dialogue. It's why a lot of its dialogue is just this made up language. You don't need to always know what the characters are saying to understand the emotions in Eco. Because of that gameplay and story connection, you will feel connected to the characters. Because Eco doesn't understand Yorda's language, neither do you. To connect the player, to the character in the game. This would also mean completely removing a HUD to remove anything blocking the player to the game. Even guiding or tutorial isn't done by your typical developer text. Rather, it's done with clever level design or camera hints. That's why you can't just press a button to hold Yorda's hand. You need to hold R1 to hold Yorda's hand. To further connect the player's actions on the controller, to the character actions on the game. Even that simple combat I talked about. You remember, um, anime flashback now! Hit the bad guy with your stick. That's okay because the combat isn't the focus. This relationship is. Even when you are in combat, the point is never to defeat all the enemies and oh, watch out for your, watch out for your health bar. No, there is no health bar. And the enemies aren't even focused on you. They're focused on grabbing Yorda. And the only way to lose an ego is to fail at saving Yorda. So when you're in combat, you're not thinking, let me whoop these shadows. You're thinking, let me protect Yorda. Again, emphasizing this relationship and connecting your feelings to the character's feelings. If you were doing some S rank Devil May Cry combo sh Whoops. then the fun of doing that would take away from the idea of saving Yorda. It would not emphasize this relationship. You would have a disconnect of story and gameplay. Why is Eco, who's supposed to care about Yorda, wasting time doing 80 hit combos into 360 no scope triple kick flips? So, complex combat gets subtracted. Everything in this game, gameplay-wise, is there to emphasize this relationship. Its goal is to connect Eco's feelings of caring for Yorda to you, the player. So while some might hear the idea of a whole game basically being an escort mission and think, uh, nah, it's much more than just that. For one, unlike a bunch of escort missions at the time, Yorda isn't just a helpless, useless damsel in distress whose dialogue is mostly made up of screams, shout out to Kirsten Dunst in the Holy Trilogy. Mechanically, you need Yorda Order to progress, which connects story-wise because it's all part of an emotional arc. There's a moment in this game that made me someone who in high school when told about the whole blue curtains meaning something thing was like, um, excuse me underpaid English teacher who got pregnant and did for half the year and definitely didn't have to say that one word in that book that you made us read. How do you know what the author meant? To then after experiencing this moment, I, I got it. I understood. At the very beginning of the game, I caught myself thinking, oh, this is just going to be me holding Yorda's hand, dragging her around, helping her with everything. But slowly as you play through the game and you realize how much things you need her for, you connect to her more. And at some point I started thinking like, wait, are they trying to like 
tell an emotional connection kind of story just through gameplay. But then of course I was like, uh, nah. That could only be true if at some point in the game Yorta helps me by holding my hand. The blue curtains means the character is depressed. By the midpoint of the game, Yorta attempts to catch your hand to save you. And by the very end of the game, Yorta saves you completely, showing story-wise an entire emotional arc. But that arc is only stronger because most of the gameplay was you holding Yorta's hand, helping her. And now with the gameplay and story connecting in that way, it makes the emotions and character growth feel that much more potent. By making Yorta a major gameplay mechanic, it will make you as a player connect to Eco in that feeling of wanting to protect her. I went from someone like a lot of gamers hating the idea of escort mission to desperately fighting to get Yorda back to continue the escort mission. Because losing Yorda means losing the game. The puzzles and level design only compounds this feeling. Because there's moments where you have to just leave Yorda, do a bunch of shit alone, and then open a door so she can get through. And that space of time where you have to leave her alone is the most stressful, teeth grinding, testes twisting thing ever because if you take too long she will be taken by the shadow men and you will lose these moments make me feel like there's a metaphorical majora's mask countdown moon and clock in front of my screen which only makes that feeling of when you do get to yorda and grab her hand that much more relieving it's because of all of that when you do reach the spirit sofa save points yes you stay there just a little bit longer one because that ost mwah, but also just to enjoy that sense of relief and just <sighs> eco made me worry and want to do my best to continue doing an escort mission in fact, by the end of the game, you actually get separated from Yorda completely. But in other games, when you were done with the escort mission, you will be sighing in relief to be removed of that burden. Eco again, tells its story through mechanics. The game will make you, much like Eco, want Yorda back. This part of the game when you're all alone is much harder and much more dangerous, and you will more likely die here than anywhere else in the game. But since you need Yorda to have those super chill spirit sofa sessions or save. With her now gone, there's no save points in between this dangerous section. So each time you die, which will be more often, you will be sent back all the way to the beginning. You will be constantly wishing to have her back so that you can have those save points to make this section easier. Thus connecting through gameplay your emotions of wanting Yorda back to Eco's emotions. It's things like this, using story and gameplay integration to connect you to the character's emotions, that allows Eco to tell a story of solitude and loss and sacrifice and overcoming your own limitations, and how two helpless people can overcome anything if they take care of one another, in a way that only games as a medium can tell it. And these elements I brought up are important because they are the main factor, I think, as to what inspired a lot of modern gaming. This whole minimalist approach of making a game about an idea and subtracting anything that dilutes from that idea is seen all over by pretty much any game from that game company. Games like Flower or games like Journey, for example. Just look at the presentation, the lack of a HUD, the lack of any sort of outward tutorial, the scale of the architecture compared to you giving that lonely feeling. Lucifer. The director of A Brother of Tale of Two Sons cites Eco as an influence. And it's pretty obvious, just by a glance. The way it tells an emotional story, mainly just using gameplay elements, the environments, its level design. Even the way you say it is by sitting together at a bench. But even outside of the indie world, Eco has influenced a huge series of games that are now themselves extremely influential. You can see parts of Eco's bones in all across the industry. Halo 4, God of War, 
War, Bioshock Infinite, uh, Half-Life, and pretty much any game from then on that would have companion mechanics. You can find influences and even direct quotes from so many of the Naughty Dog team about Eco's influence. With Last of Us especially, those lonely environments, that connection between Ellie and Joel. But I think Neil Druckmann said it the best with this quote. The main thing I loved about Eco was that relationship, the hand-holding mechanic that helps build a bond. It was the first time I realized you can create something meaningful through interaction as opposed to just telling a story. And while researching, I even found this YouTube video of the developers talking about the influence of Eco on their games. But that, that was one of those times where it's just like, he. it was the very first game that I played. It basically shaped my entire concept of how core mechanics are built and exploited and then switched up in a way with context to story and how those two things parallel each other and then to come out with an emotional impact that made me cry. I cried. It was the first game that I ever played where it's just like I'm in with the controller in my hand and I'm crying and I'm just like, a game did this and that shaped my entire concept of design. It was cited as an influence for Prince of Persia Sands of Time, a reboot of the game that Ueda himself was inspired by to make Eco. Even the Zelda series takes huge influences from Team Eco's games. And some of you might have heard this through Breath of the Wild taking influence from things like Shadow of the Colossus. But just one look at one of my top three Zelda games, Twilight Princess, and you see the clear influence that Eco had on it. The look of the Twilight and its creatures. The story of emotional connection between two characters helping each other grow. The Nintendo E's marbled speaking of Minna. The way they use Use Bloom to build the game's aesthetic. In fact, Aonuma has actually stated that him and Ueda are friends and that Ueda actually sent him a copy of The Last Guardian. But even outside of gaming, the legendary Mexican director Guillermo del Toro who himself has cited games as a big influence to his films, has said that he sees Eco and Shadow of the Colossus as masterpieces and examples of gaming's artistic potential, and quite beautifully compared the disregard for gaming as an art form to the way previous gens viewed comic books. It's a medium that gains no respect among the intelligentsia, and most people that complain about games have never played them. Gaming naysayers are a little out of touch because games are an art form. <laughs> Man, talk about a quote that makes you feel seen and get hard at the same time. But I think the most impactful influence Eco has had is on the Souls series. The creator of Souls and our husband Miyazaki has said that if not for Eco, his games would not exist. We're talking about modern masterpieces here. Sekiro, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, and the winner of the Golden Joystick Awards Ultimate Game of All Time, Dark Souls, and all of their influence on modern gaming that legit created a sub-genre of gaming would cease to exist if not for Eco. Zaddy Miyazaki has said that Eco had such a profound effect on him that it made him change career paths, leaving a higher paying job to then make video games. All because of Horned Boy protecting Waifu with stick. Because it's so much more than just that. It's a clear example of why video games are art. You can see the clear influence of Eco from Demon's Souls all the way to Elden Ring. The way they insist on making every part of the gameplay connect to the story through things like lore and item descriptions and such. The atmosphere, the vibe, the beautifully dark, desolate worlds. Even the architecture of Souls has that same feeling that Eco does of a long forgotten mythology or history. Even that very clever way that these games do level design. It happens in mostly all their games, especially in Dark Souls 1, but that sort of 3D Metroidvania interconnected type of level that constantly weaves in and out of itself and you can see areas that you are going to go to or areas you've already been to is all something Eco did even before Souls. I think it's no surprise that Demon's Souls, the first of the Souls games that Miyazaki would work on, had its final moments in this beach section, really reminiscent of how the beach looks in Eco. And just in general, the way that these games try to tell their story through gameplay. I am not exaggerating when I say it was the game that changed my life, and I am proud that it was Eco and it was Ueda's game. And look, Eco is not a perfect game, that's not what I'm trying to convey. But it's special and unique in a way that influenced gaming forever. And I wanted to make this video to give Eco its deserved flowers in the more mainstream, casual discussion of gaming. And who knows, maybe we'll get a future remaster the same way we got with Shadow of the Colossus, which can hopefully help even more people see the 
brilliance of Eco. And to this day, I still haven't felt something quite like the castle of Eco just falling apart at the very end of the game. While it was considered a commercial failure, its legacy will live on for much longer as one of the most foundational games in video game history and one of the most important video games ever. <laughs> Thank you so much for making a pit stop here on the corner of the internet. I would really appreciate if you left me a comment about how you feel about Eco. And if you like what I do, you can always leave me a like and a subscribe, but the best way to support your boy is with the link above to my Patreon. I would really appreciate that. But with all that being said, thank you so much for coming to this little pit stop on the corner of the internet. Peace.